Hey guys, Larry here. I wanted to take a minute to, uh, I'll be brief actually, um, to let you know there's been a delay in the amount of videos I'm doing just because of a few life events here uh, in the in the shop. Uh, nothing serious, we're doing fine, but uh, it just caused me to reprioritize uh, the videos. I'm releasing today's video um, on using Arduino CMRI and JMRI. But it's a little different than you may have seen in the past. Um, I'm going to kick over to our sponsor for this video, and that's going to be Soundtracks. I am a Soundtracks dealer. I believe in the product. Uh, let me go on record as saying I don't hate any other decoder and any of my customers that want to use anything else. I more than welcome the install base on them. But I, I like the effects on Soundtracks. I like the way they work. And... Um, I just overall am very pleased with the results I get from the installs, quality of sound, the way they run, uh, and all the features they have internally. Thanks. Uh, it's one of the few times you'll see me on the camera, but uh, here we go. All right, guys. Um, this is the second in my series of CMRI to JMRI videos. I decided to configure a Nano so that the Nano did a lot of the heavy lifting for running servos. Uh, as we go through the code, it'll become a little more clear. But what I have here is my standard prototyping shield with an Arduino Nano on it. I have a pair of bipolar LEDs hooked up to two outputs and a servo hooked up to another output. I additionally have provisions for four switch inputs that using JMRI will toggle. We showed you how to do the inputs on the last video, so I won't go over that other than to give you the assignments when we go through the code. As I promised on the last video, I'm going to go over the, um, C the RS-485 hookup, and uh, so you know, it's really, really simple. But I just wanted it out there so you guys know. I'm going to move the camera here to the RS-485 uh, level adapter. It basically converts the RS-485 levels to um, three pins going to the Arduino. I will show you what it looks like in a picture up in the corner, and I will obviously put links to it in here. So this is the RS-485 adapter right here. It has four pins on one end, and four pins on the other. The two big pins here are the RS-485 inputs. You have a B plus or a VCC and a ground. I've been powering these from 3.3 volts. The book says they're good to five, but I had one fail. I, it could have just been a fluke. But they run fine on 3.3, which is readily available on the Arduino, so I just chose to do that. The other four are called DI, which is the first one here on the left. That goes to pin 0 on the Arduino. The next two are called DE and RE. And I take that back. The first one is D0, and then there's D, E, and R, E, which are tied together. I just made a little jumper out of um, the, the lead and then soldered it in, and that goes into pin 2. The third one is labeled D1, and that goes over into pin 1 on the Arduino. So you have pin 0 pin one on the other outside, and then the two in middle ones go to D1. And B plus on the other side. Then you have the RS-485 input coming in here, and you have to pay attention. They're labeled A and B on here, and on the adapter, which you'll see here in just a second, because I'll pan over to it, there's an A and a B, but it's labeled on the adapter. And again, there'll be links to the various hardware pieces here. So here is the RS-485 adapter. You'll see that it's 
flashing and doing all kinds of things, as we covered in the previous video, that is polling the inputs. You can slow down that polling if you want to by adding a delay in the code. I'll show you where you can do that, okay? Um, if you get a bunch of RS-485 units on there, you might see a delay, but ordinarily, no, you won't because the Arduinos are cycling so fast that even if you have 10 of them, it's not going to be a major difference, okay? Um, two wires out of here, come into here. It's that simple. And uh, we'll go through kind of the setup of that in JMRI also, okay? I think we covered it the previous time, but I want to show you this time how you do the servos, etc. All right, I'm going to switch over to the um, the OBS software, so the audio will be a little bit different uh, because I'll be switching microphones, obviously, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, let's jump right into the code here. Um, I'm in the Arduino IDE. You can use either the one on Windows or you can, uh, the one in the Windows Store, or you can download it yourself. I'm not going to go over that again. Um, but this is the first time I've seen it done, this done this way. Most people use the PCA485 or whatever that board is, uh, 9685, there we go. Um, this one, I'm using a single Arduino Nano to drive four servos and eight LED outputs. Um, the four servos are attached to three through six. The eight LED outputs are in seven through 14, and the four inputs are 15 to 18. Okay, um, if you remember, I covered just a minute ago, zero, one, and two are used by the RS-485. Okay, so now we'll go through the libraries that we need. We need one called wire.h that's readily available, as is cmri.h and auto-485. This one, the variable speed servo, I will put a link in the description where you can download it. This one was uh, found and um, used by a friend of mine, Ron Kleiss at uh, Mine Mount Models. Uh, he found it just kind of on a whim, and I've seen a couple other ones out there to kind of do the same thing, but this is the most reliable one that I've found. Um, Here's our first definitions. We're going to define the CMRI address as zero. Um, that allows you to start at servo number one. If you put this address to one, it would start at 1001. Okay, the next thing is we're going to define the, the DE pin, which is the data entry pin, and that's pin two. That is needed for the RS-485. Okay, this next command real quick is the um, auto 485, which just defines the pins and sets the bus. Here's the CMRI command. Now, if you notice from my previous video, this one is set for an S mini over here. Um, it's address zero, I need to update that note. But an S mini has 24 inputs and 48 outputs. If you're going to use more than 40, uh, 48 servos, then you will need to add a second card. Not a big deal. It can still be the same way. The next definitions are we're defining these things using the variable speed servo library. We're defining the four servos outputs. The, other, the next thing and last that we're defining is these bits are read bits from CMRI to t check the status. I have an extra variable here. It's currently not doing anything because I had this set up for five servos with one output. You can do that and I'll kind of go over that as we get through the code, okay? Quickly, we'll run through the setup. Here we go, the serial begin, and that's the baud rate that we're gonna use, serial 8N2. You have to make sure that JMRI is set to this speed, and I'll show you once again how to do that. And this just prints the code. If you ever wanted to, weren't sure what was on the Arduino Nano, 
I put this little command in here and it'll show up if you go to the, um, come up here to tools and you come to the serial monitor, as it boots, it will show you what this thing is. So if you don't know what's on it, rather than reload it, you can just do a quick check. All right, so the next bit of setup is we're going through the the uh, defining the outputs. So we start at 8 and we end at 15, which is less than 16. You could do equals equals 15, that'd be fine. And then what it does is it's going to repeat this command on each one of these. So it'll first one to be pin mode 8 as an output, next one 9, on and on and on. Okay? You can do the same command with these inputs. I just, since there's four of them, I just listed them in here. Again, input pull up is what I use because it puts a, a virtual resistor in the Arduino and it makes sure it goes high when that switch is not grounded. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the four servos to gate servo and uh, define the pin they're on. So pin three, four, five, and six. The next thing we're doing is I'm going through each one of these and I'm setting it to the closed position. So if you look, this first number on his right is the, the servo position. The second number is the speed. Set to zero, it acts like a snap switch. So as you go through this startup, it will just jump over to, to the closed position. There's no sense in being slow going through startup. Last command in the setup is beginning our speed bus at 28.8, which is the RS-485. Okay, now we will go through the loop. The first thing we're gonna do is process all the things we need to process for CMRI. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our inputs. We have inputs again on 15 through 18. So we're going to do a digital read of those pins and we're going to tell CMRI to set the bit for address 0, which is input 0, zero 1, and then on through them. So if the switch is grounded, it will set a 0. If it's not, it will set a 1. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually read from JMRI bits 0, 1, 2, and 3. Remember, these are inputs, these are outputs. So they can have the same bit because they're obviously different. So we're getting the bit from JMRI for address 001. And then you go down through it. If you want to use servos 4, 5, 6, and 7, then this is where you're going to change them. 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever. You want it to be up to 48 down here, the bottom one being 48. You can put them in or you can mix them up if you need to. All right? So I'm going to go through one of these and show you what happens. So what we just finished reading T-bit 1. So I have here, if T-bit 1 is equal to 0, then we're going to write this servo at to position 105, which is closed, okay? And then we're doing it at speed 8. You can adjust this all the way up to 25, and 25 is, my goodness, slow. So 8 seems to be a comfortable speed, but you can tweak this number if you choose to, and again, this one will change your position. So what I've said is, if that's a 0, okay, which means closed, then I want to write digital pin 7 as a high, and digital pin 8 is a low. So this turns on the green LED if you have a single LED hooked to that pin, and this one turns off the red LED. Now, if you wish to use a bipolar LED, you can simply hook it up across 7 and 8, and it will change from red to green, and I'll show you in the code here in a second how it does it. Now, I have used 330 ohm resistors. I know 5 volts is considered to be a 220, but there's a minimal difference in light 
using a 330. All right, so going back up here. So if T bit one is a one, then we know that our servo is thrown. So we need to then go down here and we go to position 75 on the servo at that speed, but we put pin seven low, which turns off the green LED and pin eight high, which turns on the red LED. So that's, we go through that each time for the four of these, and that's the extent of the code. That's all of it. It works pretty well. Now, I said I was letting the Arduino do the heavy lifting. Well, think about it. We've covered every possibility for our servos here, and rather than do a get, um, get a bit for a light output in JMRI, we're saving data. We know that these are always going to be true, okay? Um, so if you want to do the get bit for the inputs, you know, they start at um, uh, 100. So you can do 100 through whatever, and you can define them and put them in. But this way, this covers your fascia, and it would cover, and if you don't want them on your fascia, then you can actually use a, um, a dwarf signal on there. I will put a picture in here. I have actually used three three millimeter LEDs with 330 ohm resistors. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, at the same output with a minimal current draw. It was less than uh, 18 milliamps. So if you think about it, you'll have four of them on 18 times four. Uh, doing the old grade school math is 72 milliamps, well below the maximum current you would have on this. So there you go. That's how it works. That's the entirety of the code. Um, I will admit the, the three are maybe a teeny bit dimmer, but the LEDs I have mounted on here are fives and those are threes. Uh, the current draw is identical on them, so there'll be no change there. All right, we're going to switch over to setting up JMRI, and uh, I'll pause this in the meantime. All right, guys, I have started JMRI, and I'm setting up a new profile just for the CMRI that we're doing today. So I'm just going to call it CMRI. You know, um, you have to go into preferences and and have it delay to do this window. And I'll show you that once we get in there. Okay, so this is a brand new profile. JMRI is going to launch. I tell it OK. So it's going to come up and it's basically going to give you the help here for setting it up. I don't need it, but I will walk you through it. All right, so where it opens up to the connections window. So the, as we covered before, you do CMRI, you do CMRI, and then you do serial, and then you have to come down and select the serial port. In this case, I know it's COM6 because the Arduino is on COM8. You go to the additional settings here, and this is where you change that baud rate to match your Arduino to 28.8. All right, we're going to save this and it's going to restart. I'm going to skip through the delay. All right, so we're going to go in and edit our preferences. Now, this is not the standard Decoder Pro window that you guys are used to. You're used to the roster type window. I, I'm old school. I like this one. The roster things are all the same. It's just that sc this screen will be a little different. So you still go to Edit and Preferences. Takes a minute to come up. All right, 
it comes up into the connections, which is great. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure our node. We're going to add a node. And if you remember the last time we did an USIC underscore SUSIC which for the, the Arduino Mega. In this case, we're going to do an S mini. We're going to change this to address zero. You don't need to do anything here. The S mini has a default in it. And if you want to put a description in, you can. Again, you have to enable polling at the, at the startup. Okay. And then just click add node. All right. And then click done. And it says, be sure to click the save button. Okay. So here's our address zero. It's an S mini. There's 24 bits per card, three inputs and six output cards. So it's 18 and 24. Or, I'm sorry, 24 and 48, and it's times 8. Okay, so just click Done. All right, well, like last time, we're going to come over here and we're going to add a couple of things just because I think they're handy. The first thing we're going to add is an 8-second pause. Remember that? We need the Arduino to run through a cycle, so I added an 8-second pause. Very reliable with eight or nine. You can leave it at 10 if you want. The other thing I add just for simplicity is I add a button to the main window and I tell it that I want to go add the, um, I've got to go through it guys and give me a second because I know what it is. I want to add a button that opens the, uh, you can add one for the sensor table. You can add one for the turnout table, which is right here. Or you can add the, I just had it, the tables, open tables. That's the one we want because it'll open all of them. Okay, so we're going to add that button onto there. Okay, and that gives you a place where you can see it. The other button I like to add is to add a button to the main window and I like to open turnout control. Right here. And I'll show you why here in a minute. All right, so we're going to click save and watch what happens. This goes away. Oh, it did restart. Excellent. Occasionally, you will get one where it does not rest save restart. In that case, you need to exit JMRI and then go back into it manually here. And it will prompt you to save it if it's not been saved. I think we covered that on the last one. Okay, we're at the Decoder Pro main window. If you go to the roster window, if that's the one you have, this button listed table access will be at the top instead of down here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and add a servo. As we did in the previous one, you have to do them one at a time. So you're going to do 001 and then create. Use one bit. And I'm going to cover this real quick. You see this pulsed output here? This will, in, if you do it in steady state, it just stays on. If you just want something thrown, like on a, um, a switch machine, then you can use this pulsed output and it will do it on a snap type switch machine. But we're going to use steady state because we want it to stay on. I'm just going to add a couple for now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and add them. It only takes a second. Use one bit, steady state. Uh, two of them should be good. I should have uh, the other one on output two, so that'll be all we need. Uh, this time we don't need any lights, but we do need sensors. So let's go ahead to CMRI again. That way we don't add an internal. And we have 001, create. Again, you have to do these one at a time with CMRI because it it 
barfs for whatever reason. Okay? <clears throat> I'll just do these two for now. Oh, that's right. You have to get completely out, and then you can create it. There we are. See, I don't remember everything first time through. All right, so here I'm going to pause for just a second and set up the other camera and go back to the turnouts here. And you'll see that when I toggle this turnout CT2 here, which is what I have it hooked to, you'll see the lights change and you will see the uh, servo move. So I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, guys, you'll see that I've got two windows open here, one for turnouts up here on the top and the second one for sensors. You can do that by just double clicking whichever the second one you want open is. Sometimes you'll have to single click to get them back where you want them in order, but it's how you do it. So at any rate, I'm going to overlay a little video that will show the, um, the servo moving. So what you do is if you simply just click on the servo. I've got this one hooked up to number two. It'll go to the closed position, which is where it defaulted to. The next click, it will go to the thrown position. So you can watch the servo go, the light changes over, click back again, it goes to close, the green light comes on, red light goes out. Quite simple, works very well, okay? Don't forget, you can also make this so that it works off the front panel switch. And you do that by changing this from direct to one sensor. Then you choose the sensor you have it hooked to. In this case, I'll use number one and do apply and OK. So now, and I'll not show you the video, you've seen it move. But you'll see that if I click this thing and make it active, the servo up here goes to throne. When I unclick it and make it inactive, it goes to close. So the best way to do this is not a push button, but rather a toggle switch. Just an on and off is all you need. Okay? The other thing we talked about was the um, button that we added on here for turnouts. This is internal to JMRI, but if you had a LocoNet system of some sort hooked up here, it would work equally as well. You can just come over to address 001 on the turnout and do a throne and watch it changed. Now, it's changed because of the definition there. Both of them did. But change it to closed and they'll both go back. Uh, I've got them linked together. That's me. But that's how it works. Just simply, you know, with your throttle, you would do a closed and a, and a, a throne. Hey, guys, thanks for taking time to watch the video. I hope you got something out of this. It um, absolutely was fun putting it together and make this work for my friend's layout. And um, again, this is going to be real handy for his panels when he does his layout. Hopefully, there's no gotchas in the code. If there is, let me know. And... Uh, We'll work through them and we'll put a correction out if necessary. Again, hope you all are doing well. Sorry for the delay. Uh, the next one will probably be on a three or four block uh, signaling system. It'll be one direction, but simple enough to hook up for the second direction. Um, and it'll use a single Arduino Nano for it, believe it or not. So um, we'll use CMRI and JMRI to do all the, the work and uh, be kind of painless. Thanks.